What is up YouTube? That's here and today I'm super excited to be bringing you guys a team building video where we build a team around some of you guys' favorite Pokemon from scratch. So you guys can see how the real players like to build their competitive teams. We're going to be building it from scratch showing how to add correct Pokemon, how to add their moves, get the correct items, talk about doing different calcs and getting your EVs all right. So if that's something you're interested in, think about leaving a comment letting me know in the comments below if you want to see more content like this. Heck, while you're down there, you can also leave a comment letting me know a Pokemon Pokemon you want me to feature next time. Today we're actually going to be taking a look at building a team around Gliscor because it was highly recommended in my comments section from a previous video. So if you want to influence the channel's content, think about leaving those comments because I definitely read all of them. So yeah, we're talking about building a team from scratch and I just want to give a little bit of a, a disclaimer, kind of get this out of the way. We're going to go into our team builder right here. So team builder, we're going to open up BDSPOU, which is the form we're going to be looking at, which is a 6v6 singles. And we're going to add Gliscor. Now I will say that like you can use pretty much any Pokemon you want to just start off building teams with. But like for example with Gliscor, it's a ground type that uses Earthquake that has a four times weakness to ice. You know, even though Gliscor might be some people's favorite Pokemon, if that's what you're looking for, ground type, four times weakness to ice, Earthquake, you could use a Garchomp, you could use a Torterra. There's a ton of different viable options in this format. And I just wanna get you guys to, you know, think outside the box, think outside your comfort zone a little bit and think how um, you know, if you're going to run a really, really aggressive full speed attack Gliscor, you would just be better off running a guard chop in that situation. So, um, just take that with a grain of salt as we move forward, because it's going to be slight changes like that, that happen over playing a team a bunch of times over a long period of time that can actually lead to, you know, you making it the best team you possibly can make. So yeah, I want to say also as well, when I build teams, what I like to do is get all my mons kind of layered up so I can see the defensive coverage. And then from there, that's when I start adding my items. That's when I start adding my EVs. That's when I start adding my moves. I feel it's really funny when people say, you know, they add this Gliscor and they're like, I'm going to add all these moves. And it's like, well, how do you know what moves you need if you don't even know what the second Pokemon in your team is yet? It's really hard to know what type of coverage offensively and defensively you need until you have a full realization of your game plan. Like, what do you actually want to do with this team? Do you have any solid lead options? Um, remember, we were talking about in the team building guide the other day about like doubling up on your strengths, doubling up on your weaknesses, not making one Pokemon have to do all the work of a specific role for the team. That stuff's super important. And this is how I personally like to build teams. If you disagree with this or agree, just let me know in the comments. But yeah, Gliscor is a really cool Pokemon. I want you guys to think about what does Gliscor bring to the table? Again, if we're looking for a fast Earthquaker that's really strong, Garchomp will be good. What is Gliscor good at? So Gliscor, for those of you guys who don't know, is a ground flying type that gets a few different abilities. Hyper Card is actually pretty good. There's a lot of Intimidators in the format. Being able to be unintimidated makes it do something that Garchomp can't. Like an, un an intimidated Garchomp is actually going to be weaker than like a Hyper Cutter Gliscor who can't get intimidated. So that's pretty smart. Sand Veil is okay. There's not that many sand teams running around. And Poison Heal. Poison Heal is a really good ability that heals it for an eighth of its health every turn when poisoned. Um, and it also makes it so you don't lose uh, poison. You don't lose health from like Toxic. So if we put like a Toxic Orb on here, I know we talked about getting into our items in a sec. It makes it so we poison ourselves, and we just have like a, a super leftovers. I also want to think. I also want you guys to think about when you're building these teams. Um, just pick a Pokemon to start, and then try and cover it for it defensively. Like, what is Gliscor weak against def defensively? Like, you know, Ice type attacks, Water attacks. We're gonna be really trying to surround the team with Pokemon that not only mitigate that damage with their defensive typing, but have moves so that trump those types. So. It's not just that you need to say, oh no, I don't want to eat water attacks. It's more so like you need to check the Pokemon themselves that use those water attacks. Or at the very least, calc yourself to make sure that those water and ice attacks, if not stabbed on Pokemon, won't be able to KO you. For example, on this Gliscor set, we're going to be taking a look at making sure we don't die to play Clefable, Ice Beam, Raikou Scald. Just stuff like that. Just make sure that you have all your bases covered. And, you know, for those guys that say, well, that's, a, I don't know, how am I supposed to know what to calc for if I haven't played the game enough? Well, you got to play the game more, right? So you, you got to play. You got to play a lot of games just to get that little bit of a muscle memory. Like, start playing with your favorites and play, you know, 20, 30, 40 games with your favorites. Even if, even if you're losing those games, every single time you lose, internalize why you're losing. Maybe make a note of it on a piece of paper so you can go run some calc. It's like, uh, for example, like I was playing the other day with like, Scizor and like my opponent's Cofable like fire blasted me and like I hadn't played against Cofable in a while and I was like oh, I forgot that it got that move and so I made a mental note of it and I will safely say that I've not been fire blasted by a Cofable since so it's pretty important to do that um, but yeah let's talk about adding, adding the rest of the team I already have a good idea of the team kind of planned in my head but I've not actually you know written it all down yet so it's not really on like pen and paper yet 
So yeah, Glisco is really cool. It brings a lot of defensive t uh, pivoting to the table. And the way that we're gonna wanna play this Glisco, I will say, is I'd like to play Glisco sort of like a teleport mod. So teleport is not a move that Glisco gets. Um, it's not even, I can't even read it here, but teleport basically is a negative priority move that says like you, you basically soak damage and then you get to free switch to any Pokemon on your team. So if we're gonna use a slow Glisco with U-turn, we can come in, use the Glisco to relieve pressure um, at any time, basically, we make a really bulky Gliscor set, and then we U-turn out to the Pokemon that we want after soaking damage. And it's also going to be used with, like, Defog to get rid of, like, hazards and things like that. So that's how I'm planning on using it. But let's add the next Pokemon on the team just so we can see our defensive coverage. And I think that's going to be Clefable. And so, not Celebeal now. Uh, I think Clefable is going to be really, really good. I think it brings a lot of uh, defensive coverage to the team as well. It gets a couple good abilities. It gets things like Q-Charm, which we're not going to be using. Magikarp makes it so it can only be damaged by direct attacks. So that's like actual moves like Waterfall, Earthquake, Psychic, things like that. Um, it doesn't take damage from Stealth Rocks. It doesn't take damage from Toxic. It's a good ability. But the ability we're going to be using is Unaware. And it ignores other Pokemon's stat changes. So if your Pokemon gets like four Dragon Dances and wants to sweep you, or a couple Nasty Plots, or a Swords Dance, um, they basically don't... That doesn't actually affect the damage this thing takes. So what we're going to be basically doing is when we do our calcs for this Clefable's stats, we're going to try our very best to make sure that Pokemon can't uh, two-shot us. So like, for example, we're going to be trying to outlive uh, like a Jolly Garchomp Earthquake, make sure that's a three-hit KO, make sure things like Azel, Latios, um, you know, maybe even Gengar and Scizor, make sure those are two to three KO, KO on those moves, and then Clefable can just trade efficiently. Clefable ends, tends to act like more of a cleric in the team, and it's uh, going to just bring a lot of balance to the squad and make it so, you know, just one sloppy turn doesn't just automatically lose us the game if our opponent wants to get a setup move. Now, remember how I talked about at the very start that Gliscor has some big weaknesses to things like ice and water? We need Pokemon to switch to in those situations to alleviate that pressure. But we also want to look at Clefable. What's Clefable weak against? Uh, you know, steel moves. We want, we want a bulky water type that we can switch to in this situation. Um, I was thinking about using Manaphy here, but I do think Manaphy is going to get banned relatively soon. I want this guide to last a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to use a Gyarados here. And I actually think Gyarados brings a lot of value to this team, just because Gyarados gets the Intimidate ability. I think a lot of people are going to want to use Moxie. I think every team should have at least one Intimidator, especially this early on in the format. Um, switch in, uh, get an attack drop to your opponent from there. You can set up. So it creates like a situation where like, if I know that they're going to be using a water attack with a quick score, I switch in my Gyarados. Gyarados intimidates them, forces them to switch. I can Dragon Dance and then reapply pressure. Or if I have my Gyarados out and I'm afraid of, you know, like um, a rock attack, I can switch to Gliscor, who's going to be a physical wall, mitigate that. I can switch to Gliscor if I'm afraid of uh, electric attacks as well. So these three, this core here, this defensive core of Gliscor, Clefable, Gyarados, um, you know, G GCG is going to be super, super good at letting us pivot correctly and just maintain really, really good defensive typing. I'm not stacking a bunch of additional weaknesses, and each one of these Pokemon basically covers for the other in any situation. So I think it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be pretty nice. Uh, adding in for the next thing, again, I don't really want to deal with, um, you know, a lot of the... Let's see, what are some other type coverages that are problematic? So Clefable, right? Still has a weakness as a steel, still has weakness to... Um, you know, poison and things like that. Poison's not going to be that great versus Gliscor, um, you know, and like Gyarados has big weaknesses and things like, uh, it's, so I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm so excited. I want you guys to be excited about Pokemon. I want you guys to be excited about building in this format. And I think that this format has so much potential. Um, one thing about this team though, is that you can see that grass type attacks are neutral against all these mons. So grass type attacks are neutral against Gliscor, neutral against Gyarados, neutral against Clefable. We want a Pokemon that can switch in safely on grass attacks, steel attacks, and poison attacks, uh, just so we can stop a lot of those big grass special attackers, because they do exist. Um, and so that's going to be where Scizor comes in here. And Scizor definitely changes the way the team's going to look, see, because now, before, we're getting our ourselves to be a little bit slow, really, really too reactive. Scizor, with the big bullet punch, with the big technician, which we're going to be using here, to make it so moves like bullet punch get a, a 1.5 power boost, it's going to be really, really good at coming in after we go for the U-turn with the Gliscor. We can set up in a good situation with the Swords Dance, or we can just U-turn to continually keep our pivot. I think having two to three Pokemon per team with U-turn or Volts, which is a really, really good idea after potentially setting hazards, so you can maintain board pressure. And I think Scizor is going to be a great mod for like closing out games, maintaining board state, and then also pinning other like Clefables. Like if you actually look at Scizor, other than Gyarados, it's great against Clefable and Gliscor. So in that little matchup where we see popular Pokemon like Clefable and Gliscor, Scizor is going to be a Pokemon that can just roll through and just break those walls down. So it's going to be a really, really good mod to add to the team. But as I was stating before, I think our team is a little bit slow. I think our team is a little bit slow. So we're going to add, want to add one Pokemon on the faster side. Remember how I talked about in previous team building videos, 
how base 100 Pokemon is like the threshold. If you're faster than base 100, you're fast. Or 100 or faster, you're fast. And so the next level would be like 105, 1010. We're going to looking looking at a 115 base speed mon, something you've seen me use a lot, and that's going to be Azel. I just think Azel's a really, really good Pokemon. It gets a ton of special coverage. This team needs just a little bit more special attack coverage, and I do think Azel is a great Pokemon to add to this team. It might be the Pokemon we lead with. It might not be. But um, I really do think that Azelf just does bring a lot to the table. And yeah, I, I, I think that like we're also stacking like Levitate Azelf, Flying type Gliscor, Flying type Gyarados. This is going to make just moves like Toxic Spikes and um, Regular Spikes. Not nearly as a, like, I don't even care if they want to set those. They have to set Stealth Rocks for me to care. And even if they do care, um, other than the Gyarados, the Gliscor and the Azelf take neutral damage, the 12.5 from Stealth Rocks. So it's not like, it's not even like I'm stacking a ton of weaknesses, but I'm getting a lot of the benefits from being like in the air with these Pokemon. Um, I will say also, like, fighting type attacks are just super, like, not effective against this team. Like, they don't do anything. But I think Azelf does provide a lot of, like, good coverage. And its only real weaknesses bringing to the table being, like, Bug and then things like Dark and Ghost. So Dark and Ghost are going to usually be special attacks, um, for the most part. Things like Shadow Ball, things like Dark Pulse. Um, maybe things like Sucker Punch, but, you know, it's a dark move. And Bug type attacks bas basically just being U-Turn and Mega Horn. We're going to be walling here. Um, so Clefable is a great pivot for that in that situation. So Azel can be a great lead. It can U-turn out. It can scout what your opponent's going to do. It can taunt. It can do a bunch of different really pesky things as well as be like a late game revenge KO sweeper. And it provides much needed speed control of the team while keeping them guessing in the team preview phase, which is super, super important. So I love Azel here. And now the last mod. Now, remember how I said the whole point of this team is to go in with this Gliscor, right? We're going to use a slow Gliscor. We're going to come in to alleviate pressure. So if like if I have Gyarados and I'm pinned, I switch to my Gliscor. Uh, the things that beat Gyarados do not beat the Gliscor. Gliscor kind of gets the playing field back to normal. And then from there, I see what they're going to do. They're either going to switch or they're going to do something to Gliscor, which isn't that effective. Gliscor will then U-turn out on whatever Pokemon they have. And I'm going to be able to come in with a Pokemon. Now being, I could have come out with Scizor and Sword Dance. I can come out with Gyarados and Dragon Dance. I can come with Azelf and Repin. Or I can come out with a Breloom here. And I think Breloom is absolutely amazing. And it's one of the best Pokemon in the format because it gets a Technician just like Scizor, but it gets Spore, which is one of the best moves in the game. And Breloom has a pretty decent base speed here. Base 70 is not even that slow. And so we're going to be able to Spore walls here. And then once we get that Spore up, we set the sub. And once we get the sub up with the Breloom, we can then just Leech Seed and just spam sub every single turn and basically just wall out their walls, wall out their sweepers. Breloom is one of those miracle Pokemon that makes the magic happen to, you know, bring games that where you were slightly losing into a situation where if they can't break your sub and to like be a big bully to your Breloom, they're going to have a really, really hard time. It also adds, again, it's very similar to Scizor. It's a Technician Mom with priority moves. It gets things like Bullet, or it gets Mach Punch, and it's just adding a little bit more speed control to the team. So even though the team inherently, other than Azelf, is relatively slow, we have priority moves, priority moves. There's no psychic terrain in this format, so you don't really have to worry about it. And I just think Breloom is like a really, really good Pokemon to bring in after like a slow U-turn from like a Gliscor or a Scizor to repin something, Spore, Sub, Leech Seed, all those good moves, and uh, we'll just be in a really, really good situation from there. So there's our team. Now you can see I didn't double up into any you know, type disadvantage weakness situations. The the most glaring weaknesses I think I have are I have two weaknesses to fire on Breloom and Scizor. And uh, I think that's completely fine. We're actually going to take a look at the team builder on Maryland, and you can actually see this team builder right here. Um, this is a really, really balanced team. Um, I have two weaknesses to fire on Breloom and Scizor, and I have one resist to fire. Sorry, one resist, and that's on, um, what is it? Yeah. Sorry, two, yeah, I have, I have one resist on the Gyarados. I have two weaknesses to ice on Breloom and Gliscor, and, um, I have a resist on Scizor again. So it's making Scizor do a little bit of the resistance work right there, but Gyarados is super bulky and will be super fine. And again, I have two weaknesses to Poison being on Clefable and um, one of these Pokemon, probably like the Breloom or something. And I can I can just switch in my Scizor from there as well. Or even my Gliscor. Gliscor has uh, Toxic Heal in case they want it for Toxic. Or I also just like resist it because I'm a ground type. So really, really good defensive coverage here. You can actually see if I scroll this in here. Like the defensive coverage is just super, super solid like all around on this team. And you don't ever want to go into, like, the three weaknesses here. Because that makes it so, like, once you lose, like, the one Pokemon you'd have to resist those, your whole team just kind of falls apart if they outspeed you or have, like, a move that pins you correctly. So it's really smart to not stack, like, the three weaknesses. Again, this is the Maryland Team Builder at Maryland.com. So it's super, super fun to see your teams built this way. And uh, I think it's really important that you put your teams in here moving forward. So now that we've done all of that, uh, let's start adding some moves. And I think it's really important to add moves before looking at like your EVs 
because we don't really know exactly what we want to do with their EVs until we know what moves we're going to have. Does that make sense? And then from there, we can also talk about adding items. Certain Pokemon kind of need an item to be played in a specific way anyway. So like Gliscor, we already talked about we're using a Toxic Orb. Um, so I think Toxic Orb Gliscor is going to be great for coming in and letting ourselves get poisoned, but you could also use lefties if you really, you know, didn't have a Poison Heal Gliscor and, you know, if you had a Hyper Cutter one, you could lefties here, it would still work. But yeah, uh, I think the best move that Gliscor brings to the table here is going to be Defog. And Defog is going to be so good because it gets rid of terrains and screens and all those things. <laughs> and uh, basically, we're going to want to ha set hazards when we feel like it. This team will still have Stealth Rocks in it, but if our opponent wants to go heavy into Stealth Rocks and just be an absolute massive bully, like, we can just set up the defog and make sure our sashes and other pokemon like gyarados that have stealth rocks weaknesses don't have to be affected by that too much so defog's just here because it can be and you know what it's better it's better to have options to get rid of hazards than to not have any options at all so i really do like the defog here um the next move is going to be roost i really like to put my status moves up here first i think roost is really good it restores 50 percent of your health you lose your flying status but since we're using a slow glist score on purpose um, it's going to be super fine, and we're not going to be able to probably take EQ damage at all. Even if we did, it would be neutral damage anyways. But yeah, Roost is going to be really nice. And like I said, we're going to be running a super, super bulky Gliscor, so it's just uh, it's just great. Um, after that, uh, again, here's the U-turn here. Um, U-turn is what we use after soaking damage to deal damage to the opponent and switch out into whatever we want. It's just a really, really good move. And last but not least, Earthquake. So you can see how this Gliscor does a completely different set than something like a Garchomp, a Torterra, a Mama Swine. It's very, very different, which is why, you know, it's a good Pokemon for this team. And I think this just is going to be really, really good at switching in, soaking damage, alleviating pressure, and then allowing to, allowing me to reassess the situation, you know, while I have a little bit more control of the situation. So that's what the list is going to be. And we're, again, we'll look at our EVs in just a moment. The Clefable here, um, I think that you should just go leftovers here. I know I said we're going to not do items until we have to, but we know we're going to go leftovers on this wall set. And then as for the Clefable, there's a few different sets we could realistically go. Um, I talked about how still I still wanted hazards in this team, so the Stealth Rock will be still be here. Basically, I'm going to set the Stealth Rocks, and if they Stealth Rocks me back, and I need to make sure that my Gyarados isn't taking Stealth Rock damage, or my Azelf might have like a Sash or something, if I want to preserve, preserve those things, I'll go to my Gliscor and click Defog. But if I set Stealth Rocks, and they just let me get away with it, cool, I'll take Rocks. And then from there, I'll just go into like my Gyarados instead of Dragon Ants to win the game. Like, that's super fine. We'll take those free wins if we can. Or maybe I've already lost Gyarados, and... Azelf might have already had its sash broken or something like that. I'll just let them, uh, we'll just trade rocks at that point, and I don't even need to defog, and we both have hazards up, so it's super, super nice. Um, I think that there's a few other options we can use in the second slide. I think the only damaging move I'm going to go with is Moonblast. I talked about, like, Fire Blast Capable for checking Scizors. Uh, it gets Ice Beam a lot of the time to check other dragons. I'm fine just going Moonblast here. I want Capable to be a little bit of a bulky Pokemon. And I'm going to just go Moonlight here. Just re being able to restore 50% of your health. And it restores more in the sun, less in, like, the sand and the hail. Sand, it's whatever. It's, it's based off the weather. But just a standard heal is completely fine. Now, I was thinking about going Thunder Wave here. I think Thunder Wave's really, really good on Clefable. I've thought that for years. You know, one well-timed Thunder Wave into a sweeper on a switch in, it basically just wins you the game. Um, like if, for example, like if my opponent is using like a Latios and they switch in there to block like me, or maybe they wouldn't switch in like Latios, like a, a Infernate maybe, or I don't know, maybe like a Gyarados, and I get the Broth Thunder Wave off into it on the switch in, that would basically just win me the game. Um, because their, their big sweeper just got completely neutered by a wall that I can then you know, just Moonlight until they get fully paired and then start trading effectively with Moonblast. So Thunder Wave's really cool, but I do think that because I have a Spore user on the Breloom, I don't really want to clash those together. Um, and again, there's a lot of Gliscors running around right now, a lot of Poison Heal Mons, even Breloom is commonly using Poison Heal. So I don't think that we're going to go with the Thunder Wave. I think I'm actually going to go with Aromatherapy, which will <laughs> heal my Gliscor, but I can just Retoxic uh, Orb back up again. So I, I think I'm just going to go with the Aromatherapy set. I don't think there's necessarily a problem with it. And Aromatherapy heals your whole team, so it makes it so... If I get hit with, like, a Thunder Wave on my Gyarados or a, a Wilbur Wisp on my Scizor or, like, a Sleep on my Azelf or something, I can just kind of let those things happen in Aromatherapy, a throw, aromatherapy to fully heal my team's status. And it just makes this Pokemon, like, a really, really good Cleric Mon that you can switch in. And again, the, left, the Unaware makes it so we're not just going to get swept by something. So I can come in, Aromatherapy to reheal something else. Even if I lose the Clefable over that turn, it's going to be completely fine because the... You know, it enables our sweepers to continually do the job that they need to do. A couple other people like going like wish in situations and then they wish pass to something else. But um, I'm not a big fan of that. I like the moonlight and I think that it's, uh, I think it's just good enough. Uh, as for Gyarados, I think that Gyarados is best built like Dragon Dance. 
and uh, you want to go like Earthquake here to repin like Electric Pokemon, um, and then Waterfall. So like this is just good coverage. Earthquake also lets you hit other Water types, and a good rule of thumb here, a lot of people like to put moves, like for example, a lot of people like Crunch. Um, crunch is a cool move. There's nothing wrong with Crunch, but a super effective Crunch, right, is going to be a 160 base power move, right? Versus like a Waterfall is an 80 with a 1.5. So like, let's say for example, I'm fighting a Gengar. Maybe not a Gengar. Let's go, let's use Drift Blim. That's a good example. Um, Crunch won't kill the Drift Blim. I'll go into the damage calculator right now. Let's just uh, plug it in. Um, so we got Gyarados. Let's just plug in Showdown Usage right there. Easy. Um, and let's plug in Drift Blim. Oh, let's let's use Miss Magus. Because that's a, a little bit more common, I would say. And let's plug in like Crunch here. And this is showdown damage calculator. So I want you to look at this. I want you to look at these calcs. So the crunch here from like a regular Gyarados, it might not KO. It might not KO, especially if they have some bulk. Like some is a little bit bulky. So like, look at that. So you see the crunch right here. It doesn't even necessarily, if, if they're full bulk, it won't even get the KO, right? Um, it's going to be a two shot. You can see it says like two hit KO right here. Just like Waterfall is still a two hit KO. Um, and that's because crunch is an 80 base power move and it's a little bit weak. Um, it's just a little bit weak. You're not going to be getting those big KOs on, um, uh, even if, even in super special situations, you're still not getting the KOs because it doesn't stab that move, right? Mega Gyarados would use Crunch, but, you know, it was a dark type, so it could get away with it. You're, you're just better off, since these are both two hit KOs, even in super effective situations, in the best case scenario for this Crunch, you're better off just sticking with your basic stab move and not wasting a move slot on that situation. Now that changes when you have a move like Earthquake, which is a base 100 power move. Let's, let's change this Miss Magic to a Gengar. And you can see it's the exact same calc basically for the Crunch. Um, see, the Crunch still wouldn't get the KO, even if it's a full bolt. It, I, I'm just hypothetically going full bolt Gengar. But the Earthquake still has a 93% chance to KO. Like, you still probably will get the KO with the Earthquake because it has 20 more base power, which is going to give you just a ton more damage. Um, so, rule of thumb here. I know I did a terrible job of explaining it. Um, if a move is weaker than base 90, and it's not something that's commonly four times super effective, like Ice Beam or Flamethrower or even Thunderbolt, you don't don't run it. Uh, it's, it's just not a good idea. It's better to just stick with your stab moves, and anything over base 100 is fine. So like uh, Earthquakes, Close Combats, Super Powers, those are all going to be good. Uh, Outrage, for example, is still technically usable in those situations. So what I'm saying is just don't waste your time with Crunch. Uh, I actually think the best move here is to go Taunt. And uh, the way the reason why I like taunt is I want to be able to taunt things, and I want to be able to say, hey, you can't do this. I can taunt scissors, make sure they can't roost, can't swords dance. I can taunt stealth rocks users. I can taunt thunder wave slash toxic status users. I can taunt a lot of stuff. And usually, what happens when you taunt those things? They're like, ah, oh, I can't do the thing that I wanted to do. I'm gonna switch. When they switch, that's when you dragon dance. And when you dragon dance, you win the game. So it's gonna be a super super cool set. And uh, I will say that I'm probably just going to run a Leftovers here. And Leftovers are just a super common item in 6v6 singles. And there is no item clause in this game because that's just the way the format goes. So you can stack multiple Leftovers. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is going to be a really, really cool set. And we'll talk about our EVs in just a little bit. But it provides correct coverage. It provides correct speed control. And it provides the respect for like stopping your opponent's walls and things like that. Up next is going to be Scizor. And again, this Technician is going to make it so our uh, moves that are base power 60 or less get a 1.5 boost. So that's going to be Bullet Punch here. So it's going to be a 40 base power move that gets a stab boost of 20 and or 1.5 and a stab and then a technician boost again. So it's going to be just a really, really strong move. I'm actually going to go with U-turn here uh, just so I want to be able to soak damage and then U-turn out. And then these last two slots, you know, sometimes people go defog here. We already have a defog user. We don't really need it. I'm going to go roost here um, just because I think roost is like really, really good. Being able to restore health, very similar to the Gliscor. Having bulky mons that can restore their own health especially if they have really, really good defensive typing, is going to be really good. So this is great versus Mammoth Swine's Garchomp, so we come in just to alleviate that pressure. Even in the Scissor Mirror match, Roost is very good. And if we, you know, we U-turn or bring this guy in, um, we can Roost on like a sloppy turn that they have to switch, and then I can just give my Scissor like a second life. And the last move here is going to be Swords Dance. And usually, I'm not a big fan of having Swords Dance and U-turn, but I know how important U-turn is into this team. The, way, the reason why I chose to go Swords Dance here is because after I've grinded out most of their team, I've grinded out maybe the two things that can beat the Scizor. Uh, what I'm going to want to do is pivot into my Scizor, Swords Dance on a free turn that I know I have a pin on them, and then from there, this will allow me to like outpin their sweepers that they haven't really used yet. So for example, a lot of people, you, you, there's two kinds of people. People that lead with their Latios and people that save their Latios in the back to sweep. And if you save your Latios in the back and I get a couple Swords Dances off, I can just completely KO you with the priority Bullet Punch move. And so I would have... 
normally you would want to go x scissor here bug bites not in this game for scissor um but i i think that you use u-turn a lot all game and you just save the sword stance and sweep once with it at the very end of the game and that's how we're going to enable like scissor to be like a late game sweeper late game clean up mon that we actually need it to be so and if again if we don't put sword stance here there's not really that many other moves a lot of people like to go debug i've used light screen before i just think sword stance does bring a lot more to the table if you're not planning on leading with your scissor a lot you definitely save the sword stance and just make it a mon you have in the back to you know clean up the game and up next is gonna be Azelf. I'm probably gonna be building a Sash Azelf. Did I talk about the item choice? I'm gonna go leftovers here again, um, just because I'm gonna be really bulky with these guys. Other common item choices are like Lumberry here, but again, we don't really need the Lumberry because we have an Aromatherapy Monarch, Monarchal Fable. So yeah, I think that just leftovers is fine. But yeah, we're gonna go Sash here. Uh, you know, I've historically built like Azelfs with like Stealth Rocks, uh, U-Turn, uh, Thunderbolt was only really popular because Gyarados was really good, right? Um, but it was really good against Pelipper before the Pelipper ban in OU and Psychic. Now, I still like the Thunderbolt coverage because it pins things like Staraptors, which are still really common. And there's flying types are just super common in general. Um, Aerodactyl is one of them that like after Stealth Rock's damage, you know, you can just dumpster them with Thunderbolt here. I think you're going to need Psychic. I think you're going to need U-Turn. I don't think we need the rocks. I think you can actually cut the rocks because more often than not, we're going to want to defog. And I remember I talked about using this Azelf. Yes, it can leave, but I kind of want to use it as like a late game mon to like close out the game with like correct speed control. Like we soak damage, we resend out the Azelf, um, and then we have them pinned. And a pin is where like, let's say you have a Pokemon that's like a 30%. Let's say you have like a 30% health on your Clefable. And I switch in an Azelf safely through the use of U-Turn using a mon that's slower than the Clefable. So your Clefable, which you kind of need to save because it's a really important mon in this matchup, well, it has to either stay in and die to a Psychic, or it can switch. And in those situations, Azelf's one of those Pokemon where if it has such good offensive coverage use, using moves like Thunderbolt, Psychic, and a couple other options, not a lot of Vons can really switch on it and get away with it. Like, for example, like if you switch in, if you switch out your Clefable there for something like a Mamoswine, I'm going to two-shot that thing with Psychic. It's going to do like 60% every single time. So you switch in, take 60, and you can Ice Shred me, it won't, it won't kill me. And then I'll just hit you again because I'm faster than you. And I just hit you, double tap you with Psychic. And then you lost a complete mom for that. That's a correct pin. Then from there, you can send out something to regain board pressure. But now you're out one of your pieces that is really important in your team. So now, like, I don't have to, res like, now I can use my Gliscor. Your Mammoth Swine's gone. So that's just a general example. And so I don't really think we need the Stealth Rocks here just because I want to use Azelf more as that Pokemon we bring in after to, like, set up pins. And so I actually think we want to have better coverage. And so I want to actually go Flamethrower. And I think the biggest reason for Flamethrower is we want to have fire coverage for Scizor. There's no Ferrothorn in this game, but Azelf being weak to bug, it baits those Scizors so hard. They bring in those Scizors and they're like, I'm going to U-turn that thing. And I'm like, are you? I hope I hope you think that you can because Azelf's going to outspeed you. It's going to have full special attack and it's going to absolutely dumpster your Scizor with this Flamethrower. Flamethrower's also good against things like Mamoswine, like I was talking about. We, need, we do need to respect that Pokemon. Any Pokemon that's actually an Ice type, so things like... Or, like, uh, Scizor's four times a week, it might as well be a nice type. Things like Obama Snow, things like Rotom Frost. Those Pokemon do exist in this format. Things like Frostlass. This is going to actually give us coverage for Frostlass, which is, I think, highly needed because we actually have weaknesses to that Pokemon. And uh, I, I just think it's a really, really good addition to the team. Um, and it's good against, like, Metagross. Like, Flamethrower is good coverage, and uh, I, do, I do like it here. But you can also go Taunt. You can go Stealth Rocks. You can go Explosion. Um, there's so many different things you can do as Azelf. You can go Dazzling Gleam. There's a tons of different options. But I'm going to go with the Flamethrower for this team. And last but not least is Brelum. We know that we want the Spore. Um, we know that we are going to want... Um, I, I usually like to build my Brelums a little bit different. There's two basic Brelum sets. There's Technician, where you go with like Bullet Seed and Bullet Seed. Every one of these Bullet Seed 25 hits is going to get a Technician boost. It hits two to five times and it's super, super strong. And they usually go like Mach Punch. Um, and then like, they usually go like Sub here. And they... Or, or they... they go with some other move here and they sometimes are sash sometimes are life orb there's a bunch of different options and then there's also the set that builds more like a gliscor with poison heal and you go like toxic orb right and those ones you go like sub um and you go like leech seed right and it's like that with poison heal now i like to do mine as a mix of both of them so i like to actually put leftovers on mine which seems weird you're like why don't you do toxic heal why don't you get the bigger heal? I don't really need the extra heal. I actually want the damage from the Mach Punch to be better. Um, so you can actually, like, for example, if you don't have the Mach Punch boost, you don't one-shot Weavile, right? I need that Weavile to go away so I can enable my Gliscor into being used correctly. 
So I like having the Technician Boost on my Mach Punch. Um, and this is technically just Restoration here with Sub Leech Seed. Um, so this is the set that I like to go with. It does. It's a little bit of a double dip into both worlds, but it also makes it so Brelum has like just inherent healing from leftovers, and it, it's not that bad. It's just, and no one's gonna try and toxic a Brelum either. Just throwing that out there. Even if they do, you can just sub in their face, and remember, sub's gonna be able to block those status moves. So I like this set. This is my personal favorite one, and I think it's just really, really good because it it gives us a lot more offensive options and defensive options at the same time. So now we've picked all of our mods. We've picked all of our moves. And now we want to start adding our EVs. Now, a lot of people ask me, like, that's a how do you know how to EV train? Well, a lot of people just go over here. Once you've clicked your moves, once you have a move set selected, you can go into Showdown and it'll, it'll guess a spread and give you a basic EV spread based off of whatever you're going to be wanting to do. It sees you have offensive moves. It assumes you want offensive attack. Clicking this button is usually going to be wrong. It's usually going to be wrong. It's giving you a base set that someone's used before. And if you're going to build a set like this, I remember I talked about it. If you want a full attack Pokemon that is ground type with a four times ice weakness that stabs Earthquake, use a Garchomp. This will be better off as a Garchomp set. And so we're not going to be clicking these buttons. We're going to be building our own EV spreads. And the way that we know to build our own EV spreads is what did we say we were good against? What did we say we were weak against? We said we don't really want to deal with like um, water attacks and ice attacks. And so it's not just that we have to deal with those moves. We have to think about what Pokemon use those moves so they can then plug them into a damage calculator. So we're gonna go to this damage calculator right here that we used a little bit earlier. Uh, we're gonna plug in our Gliscor here. And remember, these games are gonna be set at level 100 and EVs are different at level 50 and level 100, so just keep that in mind. So I think Clefable is like a Pokemon that tends to fight Gliscor a lot. Like they're both really popular. We're using both of them. And Clefable is usually the Pokemon people like to tech an Ice Beam on. They tech an Ice Beam with a Clefable and you can see it does 108. That's an Oko right there. Like that's just straight up like we dead, we be big dead. Um, so we don't want to deal with that. So what we're going to do is we want to just put full um, full HP because we know we're going to be a wall. And the general rule of thumb is whenever you're putting points in HP, HP is going to give you better returns on damage mitigation than defense and special defense because it mitigates both at the same time. So for example, you can see if we put full 252 into HP, it makes it go from 108 to 89. If we put those just straight in special defense, it's going to donate it more. It's going to go from 108 to 81. Right, so that's about a that's about a 40% more reduction. So you may be thinking you should just put full points in special D. The reason why you want to put in HP is because it does the same sort of mitigation, but about a 60% a damage reduction for both defense and special D at the same time. So like putting the points in here also helps us eat ice punches and other physical attacks. So it's going to be general rule of thumb is to put points in HP first, unless you have an absolutely massive HP stat on like a Blissey, an Amoongus, a Lapras, or like a Snorlax or something. Um, and from there, um, as long as your HP is not double what your specific defense stat is, you're going to be in a good spot. That's when you start getting diminishing returns. And when you get diminishing returns, you're just better to put the points in those perspective stats like the defense and special defense. But I'm getting ahead of myself. If we put just full investment here, uh, we still we still might die to this, right? We still could die. We don't want to look at this number. We don't want to look at the low roll. We want to look at the high roll and make sure that a wall of fable cannot one shot us with ice beam. We want to force that fable to have points in special attack just to even have a shot to fight us because if they have points in special attack, they don't have more points in defense. If they have less points in defense, we can use things like scissor and azelf, which are our offensive sweepers, to then repin the fable and we win the game. Even if we lose our gliss core, we know that the fable is not as bulk as it should be, and we can take advantage of that. And so using our spread, we're able to know what their spread is and how we can beat it. So what we need to do is put some points in Spadef. And remember the first four, every four points is gonna basically change this number a little bit. Every every eight after the first four at level 100. So you can see, we just wanna make it so that 101 goes under 100. So we're gonna do it, we're gonna put 44 points in Spadef because we know we don't wanna die to a just standard like wall cofable ice beam. So being able to live, that's like super nice by the way. And then being able to pivot or use roost or basically do whatever we want. I think it's gonna be really, really nice. And um, it just kind of makes it so we don't automatically get tricked by any ice beam mods. And the cofable has like a 95 base special attack. So um, that calc that I just did for this cofable, that's gonna work for anything weaker than cofable. Like for example, the same thing that we did, let's plug it into a Cresselia. Cresselia is right here. So if we just plug in the Cresselia with Ice Beam here. And I'm not saying it lets you live all of these. It lets you just live a wall version. So like a Cresselia with like, you know, full special attack and like a modest nature, like Life Orb, like they would KO us. 
But again, like I talked about, we then know their set. We know that they have to do those things if we see that level of damage. Um, but yeah, what, what I was saying is anything weaker than a Clefable that's using that four times super effective Ice Beam will still not be able to KO our Gliscor, which is really, really good. Another Pokemon we want to check, take a look at is like Raikou. Um, I think Raikou is really, really good in this format. Probably one of the best Pokemon. And it does keep Scald from Sword and Shield. So you can see right there, this set also makes it after we uh, plug in. So like, let's just plug in... Like, well, for example, it says 14.1% chance of 2-co, but we're going to have uh, Poison Heal. So we're going to have, like, a Toxic Orb and Ability Poison Heal. So you can see it's a guaranteed 3 KO after Poison Heal. It's a, that means, so because it's a guaranteed 3 KO, that means it doesn't do over 50%, which means we can always just roost stall these Pokemon if we have to. Um, and we can't get burned because we're poisoned, so it's really, really good. Uh, so we can just basically... For st like if they we would just roost until we start seeing them do the low rolls which are these 44s and eventually it's not that we're gonna pp out the scalds but eventually we're getting situations where they've done the lower roll more often than this higher roll we get six to seven percent every single time off that which eventually means we're gonna end one of them at full health which means we can just weave in one earthquake uh to make sure we can you know just mitigate the damage and if they're not doing over 50 percent you can always just wait that out and you're just being in a really good situation so yeah we only really need 44 points in spit up to stop Fable and raiko and cresselia and a bunch of other pokemon and because we talked about we wanted to be a big physical wall i think that just means the rest of our points are going to go mostly in um defense so right here and so people are like that so you're not going to use speed it's 95 base it can go so fast and actually we're going to go with a speed reduced nature with zero IVs in speed. You may be thinking, that's a, why would you really want to be zero IVs in speed? Like I said, we want to be as slow as possible. So we soak this damage. And what I mean by soaking damage, we want them to hit us. They will not kill us. We are too bulky. And since we have restore, uh, restoration abilities, restoration moves like Roost, we can restore that health later. We want them to hit us so that we can then U-turn, which deals damage to them. But the good thing about U-turn is if they switched or they did something different or they did this, they did that, we then get to see what Pokemon they're bringing in or see what Pokemon they currently have on the board. Like, for example, um, like a common Clefable set is going to have like 60 points here. So this 60 is going to make it so... Let's just fix this up. All right, let's put in a little bit more. 84 maybe? 84. That's a common Clefable set, I would say. And anyways, that's going to be... Most Pokemon, like Rotoms, anything, most Pokemon are going to be outspeeding this Gliscor. If they go for an Ice Beam, right... They won't kill us, and we'll be able to U-turn, and then we'll be able to bring in anything we want to pin them. We can bring in Breloom. We bring them in safely. We preserve their sashes. They don't have to worry about switching in. I don't want to switch my Breloom in on an Ice Beam. I want Gliscor to tank it, because Gliscor can restore the health later. We can then bring in Breloom and go for a Spore. We can bring in Scizor and repin with Ice Punch. Sorry, uh, sorry, Bullet Punch. We can bring in Azelf, and then U-turn after we know they're going to switch to something else. Like, if, maybe if they're switching to their Blissey, um, because Blissey would wall in Azelf, we get a secondary U-turn off there while also dealing small chip. And then we can bring in Gyarados or Scizor, which can then repin the Blissey. So it's all about keeping up those pins, and Gliscor enables my other teammates to come in safely. So you want to be as slow as possible on this specific list course set. Remember, I said we're trying to replicate U-turn being used as a negative priority move. If I could have zero, zero speed, like zero, I would on this list course set because we don't want to go first. Um, like I talked about, though, the rest of the points we're just going to put in defense just because we need a big physical wall and uh, I want to be able to have that bulkiness first glist score, sorry, first other glist scores, first Garchomps, first Scizors, um, you know, things like that. So it's going to be really good. Also, um, if we just take a look at this set, uh, this is like a little extra credit calc. So if we're going to go like 2-1-2 two, two, two with like a defense boosting nature. Um, and then like we'll take a look at like a, let's see, let's let's take a look at like a Weavile. So let's just use that. So let's just take a look at Weavile. Um, we're not going to take a look at Trick Lock, Trip Lock, let's just go to Ice Punch. So for example, on this set, a Weavile with Ice Punch, like if they're jolly full speed right there, it doesn't even KO our Gliscor. Um, we have too much defense right now. There we go. It doesn't kill the Gliscor. I was like, I, I've calculated this before. Um, this Gliscor set will not die to a Jolly Weavile Ice Punch. And if you want to like, well, that said, they could use Icicle Crash. Well, we also have those Intimidate users like Gyarados. So let's do a Calc at minus one. Oh, that doesn't do shit now. You know what I mean? It's like, it's really, really good. So being able to weave in those Intimidates, um, being able to correctly use our defensive typing is going to be really, really good. And most Pokemon aren't going to be able to break this Gliscor at all. So that's Gliscor's stats. Um, the next Pokemon we're going to be taking a look at is Clefable. 
And so I generally talked about having Kaplayable making it so because we have the unaware to make it so they can't really set up on us and it's going to invalidate their moves like Swords Dance, Tail Glow, Nasty Plot, Dragon Dance, Curse, things like that. Um, we just want to make sure that common mons can't two-shot us. So a common mon is something like a Garchomp. Let's just plug in a Kaplayable over here. Now, a lot of people are thinking like, that's a Garchomp. You beat Garchomp. You're a fairy type. Well, not if I die first. Not if he just one-shots me with a freaking... Not if I try and switch in and he goes for, like, a big Earthquake, right? If I try and switch in and block a Dragon Claw and the Earthquake, I'll be sad. Like, let's just plug in this Garchomp here. And we're going to be using, like, an OU Swords Dance Garchomp. And so it's a standard, like, Jolly Garchomp 252. You can see this Earthquake does. You can see it is a guaranteed 2 a KO. 75% on the high roll. Like, that's a, that's a lot of damage to a Kabeable. So the first thing we want to do is, like I talked about, put points in your HP. Now, this is still a KO here. Like, we, we do not want this to KO us. So what we need to do is put points in it until it doesn't KO. Um, and I think that's probably going to be like... Let's just find it. I know we're going to get well over 100. To make sure this 55 uh, after leftovers, so we're, we're trying to make this number right here go down. Because we have the leftovers. So we're switching, soak the earthquake, we'll get a leftovers tick. So we want to make sure that number um, doesn't get the KO on us. And then, so you see, we still need a little bit more. I think I'm going to put a nature into this thing, too. I think I'm going to be bold nature right there. So, um, and again, physical attacks are going to just be more problematic on Kopeable because most of its weaknesses, I would say, are physical. Or the Pokemon that it tends to deal with more are physical. So things like Scizor, for example. Let's go take a look at Scizor. Um, I just typed in Bullet Punch. <laughs> oh, that's how you know Scizor is like a one-dimensional mon. All right, so oh, Scizor is right here. Let's take the Life Orb off because that's not common. So Bullet Punch right here, you can see against our Cliff Able right here, it's a guaranteed 2 hit KO on this exact calc as well. Um, basically, if we were to take these points out, you know, they be able to get the 2, or, yeah, it's still a 2 KO, but it's... Like, how close am I to get a 3 KO off this? How close am I to get, you know, when they get 3 KO? That's too much investment. It can't even do it. <laughs> it can't even guarantee make it a 3 KO after Leftover. Oh, I don't have Leftovers typed in, that's why. There we go. We can almost make it a 3-co after leftovers, guaranteed. It's a 38% chance to be a 2-co. So it's like, that means it's a 60-something percent chance or like a 62% chance to be a 3-co if you want to be 2v2. But I think 148 is fine because um, it makes it so the Garchomp doesn't just like absolutely roll me over. Um, and that's what, yeah, 2 KO after the leftovers recovery. Do I even need to have nature in this stat? Okay, I was just looking. But yeah, we're going to go 148 because it makes sure we can switch in on Garchomp safely. And Garchomp's super important. And it's similar to what I talked about when I was talking about calcing with the Clefable. Covering a Garchomp doesn't just stop Garchomp using it. It stops any Pokemon with a base 130 attack using a base 100 stab move, right? So you don't, have, you don't look at the Pokemon. You look at like the stats. You look at the moves that they're using, not like the actual mons in these situations. So like that's great. That stops like Mamoswine. That stops... Uh, I mean, we already talked about Scissor won't just roll you over. But, like, let's see. What are some other big physical mons that are, like, problematic right now? It stops Gyarados. Um, it would stop Staraptor. It would stop Luke's Ray. Um, you're just in a good situation there. And, again, we talked about most of our weaknesses or things we want to stop or deal with are on the physical side. Uh, I will just say, as well, a little bit of a tip here. Unaware stops all status changes, right? So if they've, like, been spamming Overheated Leaf Storm... They're going to be able to always do that at static amount. If you have a bunch of Intimidates on them, it doesn't take those into account. Positive and negative changes. Unaware doesn't care. So just be, be on the lookout for that. And we're totally not using these speed. But we talked about having at least uh, 252 here and 148 with nature. That means we have 108 points left. Let's just take a look at what those 108 gets us so we actually know. We talked about wanting to deal with like Azelf. Uh, I think Azelf is very, very good. Um, so it's definitely worth respecting. So, Azelf Psychic. Oh, uh, Psych Shock's not in this game, so let's put Psychic here. Right there. So, you can see it's a 5% chance to 2 co after Leftovers Recovery, which means we should probably just, like... That means we can switch on it, and then we'll have a 5% chance to get the 2 co after Leftovers. How many points would I need to make that, like... Guaranteed 3 co 132. Do I want to do that? Hmm... No, I'll take the defense. I think having better defensive coverage is just better on Kofable. I just think there's more common physical attackers than special attackers. And uh, a lot of people don't really want to fight Kofable with special attackers anyways, because Kofable can call mine, and that's something we want to force them to respect. I think in this situation, it's actually, instead of just going 108 here, it's actually better to just go 100, and then take the last four 
and put them in those two stats. And so the only reason we're gonna put four points here in speed is just so we can potentially outspeed other fables that wanna not put those four points in speed. Like for example, if most people would do something like that, which is super common, we would outspeed this set. So people that just click the button, people that are just flow charting it, we're gonna be able to beat those. So we're gonna go 148 with nature. We're gonna go 104. So it's a good set. Outspeeds the things we need to outspeed, soaks the damage we need to soak, and it's a really, really good set. Gyarados. A lot of people would have you believe that this is the best Gyarados set. This is wrong. You do not ever want to be adamant in this meta because after plus one from a Dragon Dance, you do not outspeed base 130. So you're not outspeeding Jolteons, you're not outspeeding Aerodactyls, two Pokemon that check the shit out of you. Um, so what you need to do is you always need to be jolly. Now this is going to really overshoot how much speed you need to do it. I'll show you on the calc right here. Um, let's actually put the Aerodactyl on. No, that's why we keep the Gyarados on this side. Um, Gyarados is going to be right here. And we'll plug in an Aerodactyl over here. So Aerodactyl is base 100. You can't really see its base speed. Maybe I'll scroll all the way down so you can. Um, so you can see their speeds right there. So if Gyarados were to be 252 at plus one, and Aerodactyl is like a 252 Jolly, which is super common, you can see 394, 391. You just barely don't make it with Adamant. So if we make ourselves Jolly, and this is all plus one calcs for Dragon Dance. You like super overdo it, but it allows you to then check those things. Remember we have an Earthquake on the Gyarados for Jolteons. We have, um, what is it, Waterfall for things like the Aerodactyl. So it's really, really good coverage. Now what I'm going to tell you here is you do not need to be full speed to do this. We only really need to outspeed this guy. Because Gyarados is going to get a lot of Dragon Dances off. We need some speed investment, but we never really need to be full. And I still think we should be full attack. So that means we need to take this number in speed and make it so it just barely outspeeds that 394 at plus one so we're gonna go to 393 you can see because of the way natures and stuff work just by putting in four points we're gonna get three points there because of the nature boost it's a 10 percent boost and sometimes it has like a little bit extra stuff and so you're gonna get like three points for like that last four it's gonna put you over and it's also gonna outspeed pokemon that are outspeeding it's gonna outspeed anything that would go to 395 to outspeed these as well so it's gonna like double speed creep the, the Pokemon that are like really, really fast. So it's gonna outspeed a lot of other common mons that are like Scarf mons that are outspeed to outspeed base 130s by one point. So it's really, really cool. Um, and it only costs 168 speed. So it means our Gyarados set here is gonna go, um, we still need to be Jolly Nature, we're gonna go 168. And in that situation, we have 88 points, which we wouldn't normally have. We wouldn't normally have these 88 points. And so we're just gonna put those in bulk. Again, we're gonna do something similar to what we do with Fable and go four here, four here, because putting those points respectively in defense is just generally a good way to put them. Um, and we're just going to go 80 here. And I like this set. So let's actually just go take a look back up here. And let's take this Gyarados set. So we have like uh, 80, 4, 4. Let's take this Aerodactyl and just plug in like a rock slide. So you can see that 86% on the high roll. That's how much it does to our set. Now let's see how much damage it does if we took out all those extra points. If we were just like a 252 set. So 92. Guaranteed 77%. Guaranteed 77%. That means if I took a tick of Stealth Rocks, I'd be dead. But this set that we have now means I can actually come in, intimidate the Aerodactyl, soak this damage. It, even if I took a tick of Rocks, I might not die. Which means those late game situations, I now know that I can play to this advantage. Um, and like, even, like, they can't kill me. They just straight up can't kill me, which is great. It's great to see... Um, and it's, it's slight situations like that where this Gyarados is going to be super bulky. Remember how I talked about in this team building phase how Gyarados is going to be wanting to switch in on Surfs. We have a leftover set as well, so we actually have a ton of like bulk value restoration. We have Clefable to Aromatherapy if we do happen to get burned or paralyzed. And it just creates Gyarados as a Pokemon we come to uh, with Intimidate. And then from there it forces Pokemon to switch out. We can Dragon Dance, we can Taunt, we can set up if we want, or we can just deal big damage. And this set's just going to be really, really good. Um, and it's a the only problem with it, I would say, is other Gyarados are going to be faster than you. And to that, I say, like, if you're really, really afraid of other Gyaradoses, just switch back to your Clefable. They can't really ever break this thing. We're too bulky on the defensive side. Unaware is going to make it so the Dragon Dances don't really matter. And we can actually eventually KO them back with Moon Blast. Just, like, five or six Moon Blasts. Or you can even just come in with something like Azul and go for, like, a Thunderbolt or something. Um, you can always taunt their Gyarados, too. Let them get one Dragon Dance and just switch out to something. And so they can't just, like, completely sweep you out of the game. So there's a bunch of options here, but just note that you're not as fast as the Gyarados, but you're going to be outspeeding everything else, and at plus one, you definitely still outspeed everything else. Up next is going to be Scizor. I think Scizor is going to be a little bit different. Um, I already have like a Scizor set that I would like to use here, but most people, they click the button right here. 
This is incorrect. Do not just click these buttons blindly. A good way to look at where you should be putting your stats, just a general rule of thumb, is you should be taking a look at your two highest stats um, and putting your points there. And so, for example, on this scissor, you'd say, that means you want to put points in attack and defense, which you're not really wrong, but you're a little bit wrong. Like I said, you usually want to put points in your HP first, and because scissor's attack is so good, you would normally put your points right here, and then put something like, like, like there. So you just have a faster U-turn than other scissors. That's a decent scissor set. It's not what we're going to be using today. We're going to be obviously using full HP because we want to be bulky, but we don't actually need to put, like, a bunch of points into attack. I actually think because we have sword stance to give us that big multiplier, times two multiplier, that we can stack. We don't need to put that many points in attack. If anything, we want to put points in bulk to make it so we can switch this scissor, soak damage, and do basically, remember how I talked about at the start of the video? Double up on your strengths. Double up on the things you want to accomplish. I want to have Pokemon that I can bring in, soak damage, and then you turn into my other teammates to enable them to force pins. Um, so that means I'm going to put points in bulk. I'm going to put 100 points in bulk here. I'm going to put probably 108 points here. I'm going to put four here. And the reason we want that... This gives us the two-shot Uncle Fable that we need guaranteed on the full HP defense Uncle Fable sets with Bullet Punch. That's all we need. We only need 44. Um, plus four uh, Bullet Punch with a Technician Boost is still enough to KO Latios. Um, we KO basically anything we want to KO at plus four uh, that doesn't resist us. And U-turn just there to deal decent damage. So this set's going to be super, super bulky, very similar to the Gyarados. We switch in, we use our leftovers. Uh, we use defensive typing to mitigate damage, and then we force our own little pins from there while not just getting like one-shotted. This also makes it so like a lot of mons that don't stab those fire attacks, a lot of Pokemon will be EV trained to just barely like KO. For example, let's, uh, let's plug in a scissor in. Um, so we're going to plug in a scissor here. And let's plug in like a Blissey. Uh, you saw the other day I was using a Blissey here. So like a Blissey right here. Uh, let's just plug in a flamethrower here. You know, remember, Blissey doesn't stab this flamethrower. It's a fire attack. It's four times super effective, but it doesn't stab it. So you can see, against just a standard scissor set, uh, let's give this Blissey a lot of special attack. It's a lot of damage, right? This is a lot of, this is a lot of damage. Um, so right there, you can see 252 makes it so we don't die. Like, guaranteed. We don't guarantee die. We have an 81% chance to die. But we put like 100 points in this as well. They have a 12% chance. We actually need to have this. We can't put. We can't take out any more points of attack. We need all the points in defense as well to make it so Gar Chomp Earthquake isn't a three shot. Or sorry, isn't a two shot. Just to make sure Life Orb Chomp. Um, this calc right here makes it so Life Orb Chomp is a three kill after Life Orb. So at that point, I'll, I'll talk about that when I get to it. But actually, I'll talk about it right now. Um, very similar to the uh, Gliscor and Cafable. If they're not doing over half, if they're not doing over 50% and they're holding a Life Orb, you can just click that Roost button and let Life Orb take away all their health. Um, and if they have Sword Stance, that's cool. Remember, Sword Stance doesn't really work against this team because we have Unaware. So it's completely fine. Um, and yeah, we just, we need exactly this much HP defense to fight Garchomp. And so especially though, like I talked about, they they have a 12% chance to high roll the crap out of it in KO. But for the most part, they can't. Um, and so a lot of Pokemon that don't stab those fire attacks, you can kind of tell with this team also, we're tunneling our opponents into only really using one type of attack. So Gliscor, four times weakest to ice. Gyarados, four times weakest to electric. Scizor, four times weakest to fire. Which means when I have one of those three Pokemon on the board and they bring on something that can have those moves, the reason they brought it out is because they have those moves. So we can then pivot to something that we have on their team that covers it in multiple different ways. Remember the you know type defensive chart that we made earlier. So it's really, really important uh, to... Like, this Scizor can eat the fire attack. So like, oh, you don't set that fire attack and you only have like a base 80 special attack. I already know because I calced it for Blissey that you have a 12% chance to KO me. And uh, you probably won't. You have to be full special attack in that situation to do it, which is super uncommon. And they basically, a lot of the times, they only ever put enough points to guarantee that 252-252 set, uh, like the full attack set. So they're they're slightly strong enough. Like, for example, I fought against a Garchomp that, um, let's throw the Garchomp in here. There's Garchomp. So Garchomp is a Pokemon that like is a big problem for Scizor as well too, just because it has a lot of moves. So let's oh not set it to 50. Well no, I would it's from let's go. So flamethrower. So you can see if I didn't have these points here, if I didn't have them, and it was a life orb. So this was their calc. Um they went for the flamethrower, and because I had these extra points, if you can ever put about 60 points, that's usually have to throw your opponent's calc stuff by about 5%. They did not get the KO. I was left at about 6%. Um, and then we have an 18% chance to get it. And that's like... And, oh, actually, they couldn't even have gotten this one because they were they're probably jolly too, but it doesn't even matter. They have This has to assume they're also not a special attack-reducing nature. If they're jolly for some reason... 
jolly. Uh, not justified. Well, no. Um, nature j jolly. So, like, they could not have KO'd me. So, actually, they like I said, I was left about 6%. They super high-rolled it if they were jolly, and I lived. Um, so, it's cool It's cool to see these calcs work. Um, like, I, like also, like, even if they're jolly enough the flamethrower, um, that could have potentially, that same high-roll that they got would have KO'd me if I didn't have those 100. So, just throwing that out there. It's something to keep note of. And, uh, again, it's it's super, super important to try and put points wherever. you just got to find your, do your best to find these little situations. You can sneak a bunch more bulk. The last two mons, I'm getting ahead of myself, are super, super easy. These are two Pokemon where you totally can click the button, and that's because their speed stats are super important. Whenever you have a Pokemon who has a need for speed that you need to have a very specific stat, I would recommend maxing those things out with nature so you know that you can always function at that correct speed tier. So this Azelf's going to be 115. It's going to outspeed things like Gengars, outspeed Garchomp, Staraptors, Salamences, Zapdoses, all those Pokemon. And if any of those Pokemon, like even like Infernape, are faster than this Azelf, that means they're holding the Choice Scarf. I can use that to my advantage. I can switch in my Gyarados, my Scizor on moves that they resist and get free setup moves in those situations. So I need to know what my speed tier is so I can effectively deduce what theirs is. So, and I know I said I wanted to be a uh, heavy sweeper. So full special attack, full speed, these last four points don't really matter. Um, usually you want to put them in your lowest stats to kind of beef them up uh, as opposed to like the HP in the situation, which is one point. So that's the stat. Same thing for the Breloom. We know that we want, we want our Breloom to be as fast as humanly possible. Clicking that button is incorrect. Um, we want to be full attack. So our, uh, what is it? Our move just does what it's supposed to do. We want to go right here. And that's how I would use this Breloom, just because we want to be able to sport things at the correct speed tier. Uh, one Pokemon that I've sported a lot in my trip to like top 5 OU was Empoleon. I spoiled a crap ton of Empoleons. And Empoleon can be a little bit quick. Sometimes I like to run some speed and agility. So this outspeeds them right off the bat, and uh, it just allows the Breloom to be played correctly, in my opinion. So this is the team. The last thing you want to do is you want to go back out and you want to click Validate. You want to be validated, and you say your team is valid for BDSPOU. So that's going to be the team building part of the guide. Now, I'm going to go show you guys some games with this team. Holy moly. What a lucky day for you guys, guys. There is still time to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Every single like, every single comment helps the channel out immensely. If you want to see like weekly videos where I make brand new teams from scratch like this, let me know. I totally can. Uh, if you guys want to get one-on-one -on -one specific, like, uh, you know, coaching sessions on Patreon where I help you with this, show you how to do it, and give you all the tips and tricks you need in a one-on-one -on -one session, I also offer that on Patreon. So think about checking that out. It's linked in the comments, but I'm going to hop into some games and uh, wish me luck. Let's see if we can make the team work correctly. Here we go. So the very first thing you want to do when going to these games is always type up a GLHF. It's not hard to be a uh, it's not hard to be a good sport, and everyone should be some sort of like good luck, have fun, whatever you want to do. We're gonna be fighting against a super super bulky bulky team. They have things like a Zoomoril, they have Babero, which is a little bit of a setup mon, and Quagsire is probably the biggest threat I would say. It also has underwear like Cofable. They might want to be hard casting Rain as well, like Sable. I can go for like Prankster boosted Rains. I also want to talk about like what should you be weeding. The truth is, we built this team so well, you can weed with any Pokemon because we have double ups for defensive situations if you're behind on the first turn of the game. But let's check out what their win conditions are. Their win condition is just playing super super bulky. We don't really want to set up like Stealth Rocks because the Espeon can magic bounce those. So in terms of what we need to do as a lead, we want to maintain speed control and we want to pin the things that we can pin. So we can Thunderbolt and Azumarill. Um, we can, you know, we can Thunderbolt slash Flamethrower, a Sableye. Uh, we can U-turn versus uh, Espeon. We can Thunderbolt the Babero. We can just two-shot Quagsire with Psychic. And against Ludicolo, uh, I think we just two-shot with Psychic. Or even U-turn does good damage. So I think there's nothing wrong with leading Azulp in this situation. But taking the correct amount of time to analyze a team preview like that is a good option. So Sableye, it gets potential for Dark and Ghost attacks. I'm just going to U-turn because it breaks potential Sash. They might go for a Prankster will -O They might go for a Prankster Sub or something. Because those are, those are common in these formats. But we're just going to see what they want to do. They go for a Taunt to stop us from Roxing. We get to break their Rocks for free. That's awesome. We might even be able to come in with Scizor here. Um, I don't think there's really a problem with coming right in with our Gliscor. Um, and getting our Toxic set up immediately. I think that's probably an okay play. I don't want to come with any of these other things, because if I want to come in with, like, Cofable and set my rocks here, they would just switch in their Espeon, um, and I'd be sad. So I'm going to come with my Gliscor. Remember, the first turn that you come in, you have to get your Toxic score, but you wouldn't heal that first turn. So it's really important to get your Gliscor going up early. I can just U-turn again. What are they going to do? They're going to switch to maybe Quag, and then I would be able to switch to, like, Breloom to, like, Spore. I like that play. Taunt again. This is totally fine. Like, these U-turns, like, all we've really done right now is he's taunted twice. I've stuck... 44% in him. He just scooped. He literally just scooped. Because we enabled our Toxic Orb, we revealed two U-turn mons, and we did 40% to him. Like, we, those are free turns. You have to be able to take those free turns. You don't have to one-shot every Pokemon. You want to maintain board state. 
And from there, the pins were just up. I would just go back out to the apps, uh, the as open, just do the same thing over and over again. And I would repeat the same pin because that is a small pin right there. Let's go to another one because that one's obviously way too short. Wait, it's GLHF. So we want to leave with here. Yam Mega can be a bit of a problem if we can't set up hazards. We can set hazards with this team. There's no SBM with Magic Bounce. So Yam Mega is cool. I respect Yam Mega. Yam Mega is actually pretty good against a lot of our Mons. Uh, you could have like Tinted Lens or Speed Boost. So I have to respect that. So like if I lead as up, they lead Yam Mega. Um, they could protect first turn and then outspeed me with a speed boost. So I would have to like switch to go Fable in that situation. But Azelf's an okay lead. It's not that great versus things like Slowbro, but I think I am still going to lead the Azelf. And that's just, this is my personal opinion. I love leading Azelf. I love the, you know, value it brings me turn one. So like right here, this is super, super nice. This, this is going to be a weird situation. So the question is, do I want a Flamethrower or do I want a Thunderbolt? Now the question is, you could probably, you'd probably say Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's good against this. It's good against Slowbro. It's good against Yon Mega. It's not good against Jolteon and Breloom. Versus Flamethrower is good here. It's good versus Breloom. It's good versus all of those. There's nothing. It's good against Lucario. Like Flamethrower is the right option here. But I'm thinking about saving the Flamethrower hidden so I can use it to sweep the Mons in the back. I'm thinking about it. I think I will actually just Flamethrower here. The another addition to using uh, Thunderbolt here is we are going to outspeed. We could get this thing's going to be sturdy, so we can't just one shot it. But we could paralyze it, make it so it doesn't get to set hazards. But I think Flamethrower is fine. Custap. Or Ostap, sorry, Akka. Super weird to see Akka, like right in that situation. I mean, shout out to them. Love seeing the Akka berry, but you know, means Thunderbolt would have been a better play. So good play from them. I think we will Thunderbolt this turn though, because um, they might switch into the Slowbro to block that. Oh, it's almost like I played the game, right? It's almost like I played the game. That's massive damage on our Regenerator Mon. That's really, really going to be good. And so in this situation, I've shown Flamethrower, Thunderbolt. They might switch into Jolteon here. Jolteon does outspeed and pin Azel, but we're not afraid. Like, even if we wanted to go for like a Thunderbolt here and they switch in Jolteon, I would just switch to Gliscor, right? They don't have anything up right now. Um, I can go for a Psychic expecting them to switch in the Jolteon. I could U-turn into them. I think those are both solid options. I think I am going to just Thunderbolt and try and pin this thing just because I don't like it and I want it to go away. And this this is totally fine. I'm not I'm not losing anything from this. The worst things that they can do, they could Shadow Ball my Gliscor, which is nothing, or they can um, go for like a screen of some sort. I think it only gets like white screen in this game. Again, I could have U-turned there if I... Oh, but Shadow Ball. Oh, no. Special drop would suck, but like you see, we enable our Toxic Orb here. And so from here, they're probably going to switch to the Skarmory. And uh, I think I'm just going to go for a U-turn here. Yep, there's a Skarmory. It's almost like I'll play the game. I can go the, exactly right out into the Azelf again um, if I wanted to. I can even come with Brelum, and this is where we could go for a Spore if we wanted to. I'm going to come with the Azelf. And I'll, I'll Flamethrower. If you want to switch your Slowbro and get the health back, you totally can. I don't think there's actually like a problem here i'd like to recreate that same pin that i had versus your slow row it shouldn't be able to switch in on flamethrower plus yeah just raw into the jolteon so that's free damage on jolteon that's like absolutely massively free damage on jolteon they might volt switch me here so that's why i'm gonna go to the gliscor as opposed to the fable and then as long as i don't get a sped up drop i can roost in that situation hard switch to yam mega good mon so we're gonna want to u-turn here to break sash super common to see sash on this thing um might detect first turn doesn't really have to because i already outspeed it would be a waste to show detect here um, just because that might be usable later. Bug Buzz, big damage. You like that EV spread? You like that EV spread? Uh, it's going to be Tinted Lens, probably. So let's see. What do we want to come in with? I'm assuming it's Tinted Lens. And we just did that to break Sash. It's fine. It's a big EV spread, though. And so they're going to be able to do a lot here. I think it's actually kind of nice to get rocks. I'm going to put the rocks up. Uh, I don't really think that I'm that... Like, I don't care about your bug buzz. Yeah, it doesn't do enough. And see, that's going to be a three shot. So, like, we can actually just kind of roost this out. Um, or, sorry, moonlight it out if we wanted to. If we wanted to. I could also switch into my scissor here. Scissor might be better. Tinted Lens does double damage. Uh, basically, it ignores one stat of, like, reduction. But let's see how much damage it does here. As long as it's not doing over half, we're going to get spot. It might. Oh, my God. That's too much. That's too much. All right. So, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot. Um... It's gonna go for a bullet punch here. We're gonna fodder, and then we're gonna be able to bring out something that's a bully. They might, I don't know if they're scarfed. I really don't. I really do not know if they're scarfed. And I wouldn't be surprised if they are. But let's see it. We haven't been able to check yet. So I think I'm gonna flamethrower here instead of the Thunderbolt, because they might wanna switch in the Jolteon, but then we have the rocks up, so we're just in a super good spot. It sucks that we lost one of our Mons. It does. It does suck that we lost one of our Mons. Um, but I think they're like specs. I really think they're specs. All right, Flamethrower is good here. And I don't actually see a problem with Thunderbolt things. Even if you go into that Jolteon, I just go into... I don't think, should I just U-turn here? I'll U-turn. Yeah, that's fine. Take those rocks damage all the way, Chief. All the way, every day. We just come with in this turn. We don't want to Spore yet. Let's think about this. 
I'm just, I'll just go for the math punch. And so you're seeing that Yam Mega, if he comes in, he's going to take 50%. So, like, we can pin the Yam Mega here. Um, the rest of these mons, like, Skarma doesn't want to take that. Look at this. This is the value of having Technician here. Uh, if we didn't, if we weren't Technician, we wouldn't be able to do it. It wouldn't have done enough. If we were just, like, a Toxic Heal set, that wouldn't have done enough. Skarmory's down. Lucario's pinned. Their Brelum could come out here and try and fight me. But we do have, like, good mons in the back. So we're in a good spot. Yeah, Slowbro, we can just Spore this thing. Spore set up. Spore sub. Weech Seed. Go to town. All right, we take those. Oh, is that a Lumberry? Bro, he's nutty. Yo, that's actually a super cool set. I'm not even mad. Like, Lumberry Slowbro is cool. All right, now we get a Spore up. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I should have known that it was actually a Lumberry based off not... I, I assumed it was Mentor, but I guess I should have talked about that. Um, Mentor because of a Generator, and, and that's just what... When I didn't see the Leftovers, that's what I assumed. We will sub here just in case they wake up and do something weird. But there's the, there's the switch. So take those rocks damage all the way. This Solber's gotten a lot of health off the regenerator. So he's Toxic Orb. All right. And this should be okay. Um, just go for Mach Punches. Good damage here. Drain Punch. All right. Crit. You know, never lucky. We're probably going to want to switch here. Do we switch? Or do we just let this thing chill? Like, I don't know if I need to care about this Brel one. I didn't want to Mach Punch and force him to want to Speed Tie and then send out my Gyarados, maybe? And go for, like, a Taunt. I like that play a lot. Maybe. Maybe. I guess we just send out Azelf after this, and Azelf has a big pin on a lot of those. Mock Punch. I don't want them, like, subbing. I think it would lose the game. I think I, I think we would have lost the game if they subbed there. And I don't care that they got that KO. doesn't really matter. Let's see. We can Gliscor here. Gliscor's a good bring in here, I think. Can we get a free Roost? No, we wouldn't be able to get away with it. Azelf should be fine. You want a flamethrower here? I think Psychic's fine. Yep, awesome. That works for me. They're going to come with their Jolteon. We'll switch to Fable or Gliscor. I think we can just bother the Gliscor at this point and be in a good spot. And I want to say, this game is not like the cleanest game. Obviously, we're foddering Mons left and right here. But I do think that, like, this is a good example of... If, I was in if he was intimidated, you can't intimidate Lucario, but, like, if he was intimidated, this would KO. Do I need this Azel for anything else? I don't want him to Swords Dance in my face. I, I was going to say, though, this game is a good example of, like, Good player. Like, I'm, I'm trying my best to slightly maintain board control. Yep. Flamethrower, good coverage. He tried to Swords Dance there. Um, Azel pinned. Um, E-Speed probably wouldn't have got the KO. It probably wouldn't have got it. There's the Jolteon. Almost getting killed by Rocks. I think we don't need this Gliscor, like, at all. And so we're going to go into Gliscor, die, come into Glyphable, pop a Moonlight, maybe? And if he ever sends that thing out again, he's dead. And if they go for, like, a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch here, yeah, Shadow Ball's completely fine. Like, we're letting that happen. Yeah, we're gonna come up with a fable and try to moonlight him out. Yep. Cool. Yeah, you see how much damage? If it doesn't do less than 50, we just take those full heals all day. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna full heal. If you ever switch a Jolteon out, you'll lose it. So we're at full health now. Straight up full. And we can just KO it. And then if we if we do this, they shouldn't have any mods that can break the Azel. No crit, please. No sped up drop. That works. And the, we should be just in a really, really good spot here. The Solbro is still asleep. So you can see, like, the team, the team's evil. We've lived in, like, the red a few times where we definitely didn't deserve it. Maybe they might air slash and pray for flinch here. Again, we don't know if this is Scarf or Specs. Giga Drain. Yo, not even bad. I think it's Specs, though. I really do think it's Specs. Go Fable just really, but really, really bulky. Really, really big bulky. And this is slow, bro. Full health, but no more regenerator potential. So let's just uh, win the game. Still does a lot of damage. Those stab moves are nice. And, uh... They might have, like, slack off or rest, just because we only saw, like, we saw the one berry. But you used to wake up, what do you got, Chief? Slack off, right. Eventually, like, we, we would eventually just let them take out this Clefable and switch an Azov and win the game. So, let's just chill. They shouldn't be able to do that much to us. Future, future sight, you know. I've seen people use that with this before. You can slack off. Eventually, I'll get a crit, right? And eventually, we'll just win. Yeah, one crit will basically do it. I don't want to ever switch to, like, anything, because the second we switch to something and lose it is how we lose. Note that he hasn't hit us really that hard at all. Yeah, and that doesn't do shit, you know? So it's like, he can't really do anything. He's going to have to try and freeze us, I think. And the more special attack drops we get, the harder that's going to make him. Like, we would eventually, I think, PP stall him out. Yeah, he's going for Skull Burns. I will let the Kofil go down to... I will let this thing go down to burn. I will... If you ever KO this thing, I get a free switch into my Azul. So that works. And again, if that could have crit, we would have got the KO right there. But you see, this is a big pin. You, I mean, it's a pin because you can't switch, but like, there's not that much you can really do. I could Moonlight here if I really wanted to. I don't think it really matters. 
I just want to free switch into my Azul. How many slack offs you've used? You've used 11 of your slack offs. I guess I could, the correct play here would be to like Moonlight out. And basically he's using two to three slack offs for every one Moonlight that we're using. And you just can't really do that much. And you can't freeze me out either because we're burned. So it's like, it's the lamest. We've got also like aromatherapy if we wanted to. Let's just use it. Now I think, I wonder if like, if this were a best of three, I'd like to save the fact that I even have aromatherapy. Deeps, no crit. I can't believe I've gotten got a crit yet. Like actually never lucky. I can't believe he's still trying this. But you never want to, in the situation, you never want to go and be like, bro, it's GG, just leave. You never never do that. It's it's not hard to be the bigger person in this situation. I wish I had a more exciting game to show you guys, though. But eventually he'll round a slack offs. Eventually he'll run out. It's going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, rinse and repeat. He's thinking about it. It'd be easy to type to this man. He's regretting his life choices. Yeah, more special attack drops. All right, this is the one. Yeet! <claps> Taking them. We take those wins. So, yeah, that was not the cleanest game, but it just showed how much, like, there are four or five times where, like, our Pokemon lived in, like, the red, where normally, like, 252, 252 sets wouldn't. So, if you guys like this team, you guys want to see more content like this, think about letting me know in the comments. I do not mind making these teams. I do not mind making these videos. So if you want to see more content like this, Please reach out to me. Let me know. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.